Today, we're going to be taking on fatty acid synthesis pathway. So this is um, the step, step zero. So in some textbooks, you see it as step one, but I choose to put step zero here because this acetyl-CoA carboxylase is not part of the fatty acid synthase uh, multi-complex enzyme. So it's not part of it, but this enzyme is highly regula uh, regulated. So we'll talk about this, what stimulates um, the process of fatty acid synthesis through this enzyme and what inhibits it when I release the video on regulation of fatty acid. So this pathway is just, if you're taking on any pathway, we're just focusing on how the enzyme performs its action, what happened to the structures. So that's what we are focusing on. So we'll discuss about the stimulus and uh, uh, what inhibits it when we release the video on um, the regulation of fatty acid synthesis. So now, you can see here the enzyme response for this for this step zero is acetyl-CoA carboxylase is biotin dependent. I remember we were able to actually transport acetyl-CoA into the cytoplasm of the cell. So we are at the cytoplasm of the cell. Synthesis occur where? Fatty acid synthesis occur at the cytoplasm of the cell. So we will transport the acetyl-CoA into the cytoplasm of the cell by by what? By citrate shuttle within the citrate shuttle system. So now this acetyl-CoA, uh, acetyl-CoA carboxylase, what it does is it's, it, it's actually biotin dependent. So now it, it's actually, and it uh, need the help of ATP for energy. Break down ATP, break down ATP, break down ATP to ADP and inorganic phosphate. One molecule of inorganic phosphate. So the acetyl-CoA carboxylase from the name, it carboxylates acetyl-CoA by adding, meaning it adds carbon four oxide to acetyl-CoA. So if you can, if you look at this stru the structures here now, at your left hand side, we have the acetyl-CoA, right? But look at this methyl group. So that's the methyl group. Yeah, look at the methyl group, yes. So the CH3, but now it's bonded actually. So then we look at the carboxylic group here. And we look at the CH2, the CH2 group here. If you look at this, the part that has the ketone, the ketone group and uh, coenzyme, you see it here too, that there's a ketone group here and there's a co coenzyme. So that means these ones will not be our focus. Our focus will be on, let me clean this, our focus will be on, on the methyl group here and carboxylic group here and the CH2 group here. So now let's focus on how this actually works. Remember, carbons need or have four electrons at their outermost shell, right? Four. So let me do it as this. One, two, three, four. They need four out. So now you have oxygen. Oxygen. Let me use another color for oxygen. Use um, blue. So oxygen are uh, in need of, so they have two outside. For the, the one uh, that they can use to participate in covalent bonding. So now you know carbon four oxide is formed by what? By one, mole one molecule of one atom of carbon, two atom of oxygen. So now this one atom of carbon. So this one atom of oxygen. Remember, it's two atom of oxygen. So we have to add under oxygen now. We have electron and electron here. So now if they want to participate, since carbon needs four. And carbon has four outside that are free. So and these guys have two two. So you to bind one, two, one, two. Complete, right? It's complete, right? So now we'll come to this side. Let's take a look at this. This W represents the whole of this. You get it? It represents this uh, ketone group and uh what do you call it? Ketone group and coenzyme A together. So now you can see that was, that was the W represent. Then this H is coming from this CH. It was CH3 before. This it was this before. Is this we are looking at a lot of taking on this? 
So now, this methyl group, you can see it here. So we removed one hydrogen from it. It's now that became CH, uh, CH2. Let me clean this so I don't be that off. So we removed one hydrogen. So now it's now CH2, then uh, CH2, yes. So take the hydrogen here. Remember, this is balanced. Everything here is balanced now. So we we'll stop this balance. We we'll bring the hydrogen here. Let me use black. It's more better. So we'll disturb this. So when we get here, okay, I see this electron. So now you can see that there won't be any bond here again. Right? So there'll be one free electron now. So there's one free electron now. Right? So now here too, there will be a free electron here because the hydrogen left. So we remove the hydrogen. So now this electron will now bind with this. That's why you see it as that's why you see it as as this. Because it's now become C O O H. But with what? A free electron. That's used to bind with this CH2. So that's how we got the malonyl CoA. We got the malonyl CoA through this process. So we've seen how we generated malonyl CoA. So I want to take note of something here. This acetyl CoA carboxylase. It continues to generate malonyl CoA. Continues to generate malonyl CoA, malonyl CoA, malonyl CoA. It's like a manufacturing site for malonyl, for manufacturing malonyl CoA through acetyl CoA, acetyl CoA, acetyl CoA. It cap by carboxylating acetyl CoA. So now it's a like a manufacturing site. So we take note of that, like a manufacturing site for malonyl CoA. So when it manufactures malonyl CoA, someone will come to get it. Remember when I released the video on um the enzymes of uh, uh, or the enzyme of fatty acid synthesis. I told you that acyl carrier protein, that's ACP, is mobile. So acyl carrier protein will be the one to come and be carrying this malonyl CoA to be adding as two carbon in the form of two carbon units to the intermediate. It's it 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 it, it, it carry it to start the to initiate the process and at at, at the subsequent reactions. That's, how, that's what, that is what will be added. Don't worry, we'll get to understand this when we actually start, the, when we uh, get to um, actually start the pathway prop, um, pop, uh, proper. So now, we'll stop here for today. The next video we'll take on, we'll take on the, the, the pathway according to the units. Remember, I divide, the enzymes are divided into how many units? into three units we have the condensing unit reducing unit and releasing unit so we'll take on the condensing unit in the next uh video so thank you for watching please subscribe and turn on the notification bell thank you